I guess the man to throw out the first ball properly would be Horace Greeley, but he's not here. This is the beginning now of what has been called the, the freeway series, the continental tilt. For the first time in history, it's California. he tells me he cannot go 98%, then he's going to be in the lineup. He will definitely play. Unless less Charlie calls and says I can. Reggie Jackson, troubled by a painful hamstring, uses words to convince the Oakland management he's ready. Reggie quickly switches to action, and his home run in the second inning of game one convinces the Dodgers he's more than ready. Jackson's blast provides the A's with the first run of the 1974 World Series, and left-hander Ken Holtzman employs all the guile in his repertoire to maintain that lead. Holtzman's pickoff move catches Bill Buckner. Holtzman. The first A's pitcher to bat all year long has another surprise in store. Last year, his hitting ability at World Series time shocked the New York Mets. Now it's Andy Messersmith's turn as Holtzman smacks a sharp double down the left field line. Holtzman moves to third in a wild pitch, and Bert Campaneros gets the suicide squeeze sign from third base coach Bobby Winkles. Campy's bunt is letter perfect, and the A's lead two to nothing. The Dodgers illustrate their aggressiveness in the bottom of the fifth with Davey Lopes and Bill Buckner executing the run and hit. Lopes scores all the way from first, and the Dodgers are on the scoreboard. Manager Alvin Dark wastes no time going to his relief ace, Raleigh Fingers. National League Most Valuable Player Steve Garvey's at the plate, giving the largest crowd in Dodger Stadium history cause for optimistic thoughts. But Fingers pitches the A's out of danger. In the top of the eighth, Campanaris is on second with Sal Bando up. Ron Say makes a nice leaping stop, but then throws wildly. Campanera scores to make it three to one. Bando winds up on third, and Reggie Jackson's a batter. Reggie checks his glasses to get a good look at what's coming next. Jackson's fly ball appears deep enough to score Bando. But right fielder Joe Ferguson intercepts and uncorks a strike to catcher Steve Yeager. Bando is out. Let's hear Ferguson's version as we take a second look at his amazing throw. We talked about it earlier in the game that uh, if uh, such a fly ball like that was a hit with a guy on third base, that if I could get there, I'd take it. And it probably looked like Jimmy Wynn was getting ready to catch the ball. And just before I caught the ball, I told him I, that I have it. And uh, he said, go ahead, take it. And fortunately, uh, I threw the ball at the right place so the catcher could make the tag. And he made a great job in, in holding on to the ball because it took a pretty good bump from Sal Bando. Joe Ferguson's 300-foot bullet-like throw is certainly worth watching one more time. Ferguson's incredible heroics keep the Dodgers' deficit of two runs going into the bottom of the ninth. With two men out, Jim Wynn represents the final Los Angeles hope. Look in the glove, it just might be there. Joe Rudy and Bill North are the last to know that Jimmy Wynn has a home run and it's now 3-2 Oakland. A Steve Garvey single brings Catfish Hunter in for his only relief appearance of the year. 
Hunter preserves the A's victory, while the Dodgers set a series record, 12 men left on base. Now it's Vita Blue for Oakland, Don Sutton for Los Angeles in game two. And the combined totals will show 18 strikeouts in nine innings for two pennant winning teams. With Ron Slay on first and one out, Dodger third base coach Tom Lasorda flashes a set of signs to Bill Russell. The hit and run is on. Don't have him out now, Bill! That can be a strike! Get a good pitch, Billy! Don't have him out now! There he goes. There goes the runner. There's a fly ball. Come on, Penguin! Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Hold up! Hold up, Penguin! Hold up! Catch that ball. That's the way to hustle, Penguin. Nice job. I got first and third and one out. Round ball, you go. Line drives and fly balls come back and tag up. Assume that every assume that every pitch is going to be a wild pitch, so you'll be going forward. Attaboy, Billy. Hey, Yang. Yang. He cannot see you. His back is towards you. You can take an extra step or two. I've got Vando. Go ahead! Yeah! What a line shot! Steve Yeager's single gives the Dodgers an early 1-0 advantage. What a shot! That's when Yeager's tough when he hits the ball up through the middle. Atta boy, Steve A. Look at me! What out! Watch your line drive! Take your lead and come off with the pitch! Come on, Donnie! Come on! Vita Blue bears down for consecutive strikeouts of Don Sutton and then Davey Lopes to cut the rally off at a single run. Steve Garvey legs out a bouncer up the middle in the bottom of the sixth. So, Come on, Joey! Let him be your pitcher, let him have it, Joey! Ferguson's due to hit one good. Come on, Joey! Get a hold of one like you can. Get that ball down, Vita. Oh, ho! High change up. Looking at the skip. There's nothing on. No hit and run or anything. Get a good pitch now, Joey! Oh, get on it! Get on, ball! Get gone! Oh, yeah! It's a home run! I told you! Oh, yeah! There it is! Oh, Fergie! I knew he was due! Oh, yeah! I called that shot, Joey! I called it! Oh, yeah! What a Sutton protects his 3 0 lead into the eighth. When the A's mount their first serious threat, with the bases loaded, one out, and Bill North at the plate. Russell makes the force himself, fires to Garvey, double play. The replay shows a difficult pickup by first baseman Steve Garvey to complete the twin killing. Garvey's defensive gem keeps two runs from scoring and earns him heartfelt thank yous from Bill Russell and Don Sutton. Sutton hits Sal Bando to open up the ninth inning, and then Reggie Jackson gets a break with his check swing double past third. Los Angeles manager Walter Alston calls on the National League Cy Young Award winner Mike Marshall. For Iron Mike, 
It's his 110th appearance of the year. Joe Rudy whistles a single pass Marshall, scoring Bando and Jackson. The A's now have the tying run on first in the person of world-class sprinter Herb Washington, who replaces Rudy with one out. Washington, the A's designated runner, tells of his unique job as baseball's newest specialist. When Mr. Finley signed me, he, his hopes were that I could win anywhere from five to ten ball games. By Alvin Dark's count, I've won eight, so I would say that it has been successful. Mike Marshall moves toward first, gets one strike on pinch hitter Angel Manguel, then plays cat and mouse with Washington. Marshall succeeds with a vital pickoff. And here's the replay with Herb Washington commenting on the action. When I win the ball game, Alvin just said, pick up the sign for me, and I'll let you know whether we want you to steal or not. I received the steal sign. I got a lead that I thought I was comfortable with. But the first time Mike Marshall came to first base, it was a little bit deceptive in that his, I thought that that was probably his best move. Uh, took maybe another half a step on the lead, and that's the move of which he picked me off on. With two out of the bases clear, Mike Marshall strikes out Angel Manguel, and the Dodgers tie the series at one game apiece with a 3-2 victory. <laughs> Commissioner Bowie Kuhn leads the way up the coast as the scene shifts to Oakland. Hall of Famer Joe Cronin on the right, American League President Lee McPhail hope the A's can sweep it home, but National League President Charles Feeney supports a return to Los Angeles. Peter O'Malley, president of the Dodgers, is on hand, while his opposite number, A's president, Charles O. Finley, conducts high-level telephone talks. The Dodgers' Walter Alston, dean of major league managers, will go it alone without a party line. Cold care, ice cold, cold care. An unusual heat wave engulfs Northern California. Many, the A's have their red-hot 25-game winner, Catfish Hunter, ready for game three. The Dodgers rely on surprise starter Al Downing. In the third inning, the A's have Bill North on first with Burt Campanaris up. Ron Say robs Campy, but speed merchant North jets from first to third in the play. Joe Ferguson's bobble allows North to register the first run of the night. Joe Rudy's bouncer up the middle brings Sal Bando home, and the A's have a 2-0 lead. With Dick Green on second and two down in the fourth, Campanaris measures an Al Downing curveball, and the A's gain a three-run advantage. Meanwhile, American League Cy Young Award winner Catfish Hunter is dealing a frustrating hand to the Dodgers. Yeah, there it is, a base hit. He's going to come in there with it. I figured that. Davey Lopes singles to lead off in the first, tries to stir things up by igniting the Dodgers' running game. There goes Lopes. He's going to have a tough time throwing him out. What out, David? Ball hit on this side has to go through now. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Here he comes. Get out, Davey. I told you. Well, I, I, you no place. I got time. Go Hunter ahead. leaves Lope oh, stranded. Yeah. In the fourth, the Dodgers threaten again. Watch your line drive. Hey, Jimmy, fly ball deep. I'll let you know. Willie Crawford's the hitter. You're right. Hey, there it is. This what I told him. The double play shuts off another threat. And it's still 3-0 in favor of Oakland. Bill North's fine running catch continues to nullify Los Angeles' efforts, while Tom Lasorda finally finds an audience in umpire Ron Luciano. I'm telling you that we got to get up on a plate. That's the only way you're going to hit up that right. guy. And the, dare him to come inside. I know he can pinpoint as well as anybody in our league. Great. Not better. Tremendous. Billy Buck, he's got to start hitting like he can. We need his bat. Get on that base, Billy! 
Get out of here. Hit the ball. Get out of here. Oh, yeah. It's out of here. Billy Buck started to swing that bat out. Out of boy, Billy. Way to hit that ball. Billy Bucker's home run ruins Hunter's shutout hopes and signals his immediate departure as the A's rush Raleigh Fingers into action. Get through there. Get through there. Yeah. Jimmy Wynn greets Fingers with a single. Well, back in business now. We got that tie run at the plate again. Will you stop talking to yourself? And that's not too bad, Ron. That's when I start answering myself that you're really in trouble in this game. Come on, Steve. A. Keep us gone now. Hey, go down and let's go. Keep us gone. We're looking for the big ball. We're looking for the home run here. Oh, the shot. Right in green. Another good ball. Jimmy Wynn's emotions epitomize the Dodgers' frustrations. In the bottom of the eighth, Herb Washington gets a chance to redeem himself, running for Gene Tennis. He takes no chances this time, but as Dick Green lifts the fly ball to left with two out, Washington inexplicably holds up at second. <laughs> what do you think about designated runner? Like it? We don't like it, no. How about the hitter? The hitter? Designated hitter. Oh, I said we don't like the designated hitter. Or runner? No. You're going to adapt the hitter pretty soon. No, we won't. Have to. No, it won't. Works too well. No, it doesn't. It does too. Look we at our league. We don't need. Why? Where did it work? Worked all over. Ah, oh, Merv, give us a start. Let's go. How good at her. Come on. Willie Crawford leads off of the ninth. Get in there. Oh, he hit it a ton. He hit it a ton. It's out of here. Yeah. He hit it a ton. Out of boy, Merv. I don't want to go, Merv. Crawford's home run pulls the Dodgers within one at three to two. Fingers faces Bill Russell now with one out and the potential tying run at first. Dick Green's flawless fielding triggers his third double play of the night. And the A's lead the series two games to one. The final score, three to two, duplicates the first two contests. Ken Holtzman's back on the mound in game number four, and he has the Dodgers under his spell. Andy Messersmith matches Holtzman, then faces him in the bottom of the third. Who needs a designated hitter? Holtzman has four World Series hits in two years, and they're all for extra bases. Three doubles, and now a home run, giving him a one-nothing margin to work with. You got it time. <laughs> That's the best sign I've seen all year. Steve Yeager doubles, moves to third, and Tom Lasorda clues him in. Eye for anything now. Bucks wobble a bunt. You never know, so be ready. Good him out. Be alive for the wild pitch. Take some more. Take some more. Out of my Buck. Buckner's two-out bunt attempt fails to fool Holtzman, and the Dodgers remain scoreless. But Steve Garvey's single, plus a walk to Joe Ferguson, provides another threat in the fourth. Bill Russell's up with two out. Garvey and Ferguson come home on Russell's triple, and the Dodgers jump in front two to one. It's a way to hit that ball, buddy. When you came to the plate, there's no way he's going to get you out. He may have struck Shea out, but he will not get Russell out. Because I believe that you can hit this left-hander. Bill North draws a walk to lead off the Oakland sixth. Messersmith's pickoff attempt gets past Garvey, and North moves up to second on the pitcher's error. North scores on Bando's single to right, and the game is tied. Alvin Dark sends Jim Holt to the plate to pinch hit for Ray Fossey with the bases loaded.
Joe single knocks in two Oakland runs, and the A's are back in front four to two. The Dodgers disagree. Steve Yeager's of the opinion that Reggie Jackson was out. The replay reveals that umpire Don Denkinger made the correct call. Yeager's late applying the tag, and Jackson's slide carries him safely home with a fourth Oakland tally. The A's add an insurance run in a force play and turn over the lockup chore to none other than Raleigh Fingers. Second look as Dick Green makes a spectacular play to initiate a game ending double play. Green's acrobatic feeling has foiled the Dodgers all series long, and the A's now are just one victory away from their third consecutive championship, a feat accomplished by only one previous organization, the New York Yankees. Don Sutton surrenders a leadoff single to Campanaris in the first inning of game five. Campy's forced at second, but Bill North outraces the relay. North's off and running. The steal, along with Yeager's throwing error, puts North on third with one out and Sal Bando the batter. Fossey's solo home run makes the score 2-0 Oakland. Vida Blue coasts into the sixth inning with a two-hit shutout. Tom Pachorik's pinch hit double revives Los Angeles hopes. Lopes follows with a walk, and Buckner sacrifices to move both runners into scoring position for Jimmy Wynn. Wynn's sacrifice fly scores Pachorik, and the A's lead now is cut in half. Steve Garvey's solid single delivers Lopes, and the Dodgers tie it up 2-2. Two to two. The A's turn at bat on the bottom of the seventh is delayed by a fan's disturbance in the outfield. Pitcher Mike Marshall vacates the mound to join in the discussion but refuses the opportunity for a few extra warm-up tosses when play resumes. With Joe Rudy at the plate, Marshall says he's ready, and Rudy guesses fastball. has the A's on top, and Raleigh Fingers aims to keep them there. Fingers faces Billy Buckner, the Dodgers leadoff man in the eighth. Buckner's single goes through Bill North. Reggie Jackson backs him up. Jackson fires to Green. Green to Bando. He's out. Play as a perfect relay effort from Jackson to Green to Bando turns Bill Buckner's gamble into a losing proposition for Los Angeles. Instead of having a man in scoring position with nobody out, the Dodgers' eighth inning threat is silence. Raleigh Fingers. On his way to the World Series Most Valuable Player Award. Needs just three outs, and he can settle back into the driver's seat of a brand new automobile. 
Ron Say flies out to the edge of the warning track and fingers breathe a sigh of relief. Willie Crawford pops up to Dick Green for the second out. Von Joshua represents the Dodgers' last chance. Raleigh Fingers wraps it up, and the Oakland Coliseum explodes into ecstasy as the Oakland A's capture their third successive world championship.